welcome and welcome back. Today I'm going to be cleaning out my hamster's cage. Um, he's asleep right now, but I know that once I start taking stuff out, he's going to hear me and wake up. Normally I would do this during the night, but for video purposes, I am going to be doing it during daytime because the natural light is the best. Everyone knows it's going to look better if I do it in natural light and you'll actually be able to see what I'm doing. When he wakes up, I'll show him. Um, without further ado, let's get on to the video. So to start the process, I go ahead and I grab a plastic bag and the extra bedding that I'm going to be substituting in. First, I take everything out, I dust everything off, and this is normally the point where little man starts to wake up. And you can see him there. He's starting to poke out and saying like, Girl, what are you doing? I was asleep. But it's okay, because he knows that he's going to get goodies when he comes out. I just give him his time and let him wake up by himself. I don't like to try and coax him out. I just work around him and I take everything out very slowly as to not startle him. With some time, he'll start to come out and come a little bit further each time to see what I have for him. Today, I chose to give him a Gerber puff because, you know, he's a good boy and he deserves a Gerber puff for being woken up in the middle of the day. I just put it in my hand and I let him come out to me. And then once he's out far enough and he feels comfortable, I'll pick him up so I can put him into his little playpen. I checked to see if he wanted his Gerber puff, but I think he more so just wanted to see what it was and he's not really interested in right now, but I'll give it to him so he can eat it later. So going back to cleaning, once I have Cheerio put in his little playpen, I'll go ahead and I'll start removing everything from his sand bath. Hamsters should have a sand bath, and the reason that Cheerios takes up so much space is because he absolutely loves it. He also likes to use a sand bath as a little bit of a potty, as you can see in the bottom left corner there. So that's why it's so big, to make sure that he has enough sand that he can play in without playing in his own urine. I just continue to remove different hides that I have buried in his cage because hamsters are ground dwellers, so they like being underground. And at this point, I will also start removing his little entrance for his burrow box. Once I dig out his PVC pipe that leads to his tunnel, I also start to remove the cardboard that I keep over his burrow box. I like to make sure that his burrow box has lots of ventilation because it is plastic and he doesn't like to burrow any other way so I have no choice but to give it to him. It's the most natural way that he will burrow. I also keep toilet tubes on top to make sure that the bedding doesn't squish the cardboard all the way down. You'll notice when I take it out that there's a whole bunch of different holes and cuts and everything in the actual burrow box and I just did this to make sure that there was lots of ways for air to circulate because that is where he likes to spend most of his time. I take out the burrow box before I go ahead and sift through the stand because I make such a mess in the sandbox whenever I do this, as you can see. I always end up dropping more bedding in than I should. So once I take the burrow box out, I go ahead and I start to sift through all the sand. I went ahead and sped up this clip for you because it takes quite a while to sift through so much sand and because there's so many little tiny pieces of bedding. Once I've sifted out everything that I can find in the sandbox, I'll go ahead and I'll just put that off to the side to avoid spilling any more bedding in it. I keep taking out all of the other things that are in the cage so that it's just bedding and tissue paper. 
I include tissue paper in his setup simply for the fact that it's a bit softer and he likes to include it in his burrows. So including it is just a nice way of having a different texture for him to walk on. His bedding is a combination of aspen wood and uber white bedding. I find uber so much better than the other paper-based beddings that I've tried. It is so soft and it's literally like a little cloud. I combine it with aspen bedding because it helps to eliminate the odor and really keep it down throughout the month between cleanings. Then I go ahead and take my mini dustpan and I grab my plastic bag and I normally prop it open. Sometimes I use a garbage can, but I just could not find my garbage can today. I go ahead and I scoop out what would roughly be the top half of the bedding that would have been used, as this would have been what was soiled. Now, if he was a natural ground dweller, I would make sure to clean out his actual burrow, but because he does all of his burrowing inside of his PVC pipe and his little burrow box, I will go ahead and I'll clean that out in the bathroom in a minute. So I just scoop out the top half of the litter and I make sure to clean out the litter, especially next to his burrow box. I do this because I find that sometimes little poops, pieces of food, and urine will leak out from the front of the burrow box where he enters. So I just like to make sure that he has clean, fresh bedding around there, especially if he's going to end up dragging that stuff back into his burrow box once I put him back in. Once I've taken about half the litter out, I will go ahead and I'll grab the mix of litter that I have already. This is, like I said, just paper-based bedding and aspen bedding. Using the paper-based bedding just gives that nice soft texture and the aspen just helps keep the odor down. So I just go ahead and I replenish everything that I had just taken out so that I double the quantity that's in there currently. You should always make sure that your hamsters have plenty of burrowing depth even though Cheerio doesn't like to use it, I always like to provide it, just in case he decides one day that he's going to start burrowing. I go ahead and I mix up the old bedding and the new bedding. This is really important to do because you want to make sure that their scent gets all throughout. The reason that you don't fully clean out a hamster cage is because totally removing their scent is really stressful for them. You can see here that this bedding is super, super light. I just go ahead and I move it over to the side where I want most of it, and I get a little distracted and play with it in the process. I move the tissue paper back over, over onto the side, and I start clearing a space to put a sandbox back in. I just, I just go ahead and pile all the bedding off to the side, because I find this easiest, as opposed to having to, you know, dig around the sandbox once I put it in. So I just go grab it, and I shimmy it in there. And at this point, I'll also go ahead and remove all of the dirty stuff that I had taken out and put it into my trash bag. Once that's all done, I'll go ahead and put his little things back in a sandbox. I make sure to put some sand in the mug because sometimes he likes to pee in it and having sand in there will just absorb it instead of having him pee and then it just absorbing in on his fur. I also put this little tiny square thing in because one, it's another place for him to hide under and two, if he's finding it a little bit harder to get out, he can just use that as a little step stool. Then I'll go and grab his wheel from his playpen and I'll poke it in. I always put it in his sandbox because I put so much bedding in the rest of his cage that it doesn't really fit anywhere else. But a sandbox is so big that it doesn't really matter. I make sure that I can spin and that it's not hitting the sand on the bottom. And here's the little man himself. He is the sweetest little thing. And I thought you'd just like to see him in his little playpen. Then back to the cage. I've gone ahead and cleaned out his burrow box. And I just put some aspen paper bedding in. And once that's done, I'll show you how I insert the PVC pipe into his burrow box. I cut a large hole on the side of the burrow box, which I like to just hook the PVC pipe into. I like to hook it in to make sure that it doesn't fall out and it doesn't cave in on him. 
I situate that in, I cover up the entrance to the PVC pipe so I don't accidentally fill it in, and I just go ahead and I cover that up. Then I'll start putting back in the toilet tubes and the cardboard. Again, I just do this personal preference, I just like to make sure that he has plenty of air circulation. I accidentally unhooked the PVC pipe, so here I'm just situating that back. Then I go ahead and I bury the cardboard, and as you see, I spilled more bedding in. But it's clean, so it doesn't matter. I go ahead and I pick it however much I can, but I leave the rest. I start to put back in all of his little houses, and I also put this little tiny triangle shaped thing over his burrow entrance for the sole purpose that I like to put stuff on top of it so it feels almost like more natural for when he's going in and out because there's something over him before he starts to go in the tunnel. I squish around his bedding and I make sure that it's pretty even, and the same goes for the tissue paper. Then I'll just go and grab some more little hideys, and I like to bury this red one right underneath in the corner so it's extra private. I just snuggle it in real good and make sure that the opening is still there. Then I take his other little house, and I was going to put it on top, but I decided that that would be too high up, so I put it over in a different corner. I went and grabbed a very long tube to go into the red hideout because I was worried that it would get buried. So I just put a tube in to make a bit more of an entrance and this way the hideout is just that much more private. I go ahead and I situate all of the toilet tissue again. I tend to switch it around a lot. Then I go and grab the bendy bridge, and this time I'm swapping it out for where the rainbow one was in the beginning of the video. And just like I've said before, I like to put some stuff on top of it so that it's more natural and more filled in. Then I got him this cute little wicker type hide that's supposed to be hung from the ceiling, but hamsters aren't climbing animals, so I decided to just put the chain part on the bottom. And I just put that on top of the red hide and buried in it a little bit. I went and grabbed all of his chew toys and I start scattering them around and he has quite a lot. I'm gonna change the mode again soon, but I just decided to put these ones in for now. I went and put his water on top of the box, which I would later come to regret and you'll see why in just a second. But I keep making sure that the entrances are available to him so that he can go in whatever little hideout that he wants and there's always somewhere for him to hide if he gets spooked. Then it's time to go and grab the little man himself. Here he is. I like to sprinkle some feed on the floor in his little playpen so he has something to do. So that's why his cheeks are so full. He was going around and foraging for food. While I put the finishing touches onto his cage, I just let him explore, and he absolutely loves to explore the new clean cage and check out what's on the go. He gotta make sure that every little nook and cranny is just to his liking, and that everything is where he left it. You can see here that he's a very stubborn little boy, and he doesn't like to use the stool that I put in for him, and he'll just climb right over the side. Why he does this, I don't know, but I think it's stinking cute. At this point, I'll also start to put back in some food so that he has those resources and something to do. I was going to put back in his food bowl, but then I decided against it. I honestly didn't use it anyways because I love to scatter feed for him. It gives him something to do and it just makes it more interesting. As you can see, he gets very excited and very adventurous. I love watching him roam around and evaluate how I did. He's very particular and gotta make sure that everything is just to his liking. Here he is exploring his new little hideout. And you can see that I'm just sprinkling more food around. I'm making sure to give him plenty of food on cage cleaning day, especially when I have to clean out his burrow box. This is because I've totally removed his stash that he already had, so I gotta make sure that he has enough food. 
he didn't want this little purple treat from me, so I decided to give him peanut. Here you're going to see why I regretted putting the water in the corner, because he decided that it would be a good idea to try and dig underneath that house. When I said his name, because he knew he was doing something wrong, he came out, but he was so cute I couldn't resist giving him a piece of a peanut. I decided to keep the water on the bendy bridge because it would be more stable there and it would be a lot harder to knock over. So that concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and have a great day.